Hello, my name is Marcia Roy Madison. I'm a family nurse practitioner, and I'm gonna do a video on protein. My patients are always asking me, where do you get your protein? Uh, the egg is the beginning of life. We know that the egg has lots of protein. So we'll do that, but the egg also has fat, and the egg also has cholesterol. Now this egg is gonna represent beef, chicken, fish, and all dairy products, which includes cheese, yogurt, and any other dairy product, okay? So what do you get from these animal products? Yes, you get protein, but you also get fat. We know that there's a lot of fat in the egg because it, whether the egg comes from my ovaries, whether the egg comes from a fish, whether the egg comes from a chicken, there's a lot of fish uh, fat because it's trying to create something. Why is there cholesterol in the egg? So here's your liver, here's your gallbladder, okay? All right, and the liver makes the cholesterol. Okay, the liver makes the cholesterol. Now, why would Mother Nature allow us to make cholesterol? Because cholesterol is a raw material, a raw material for hormones, okay? And so you need cholesterol to make testosterone. You need it to make estrogen. You need it to make cortisol. You need it to make vitamin D. And those are the main ones, okay? So those are a few of the hormones. So. Cholesterol is obviously something that is necessary, but just like your body is not gonna make more tears than you need, your body is not gonna make more saliva than you need under normal circumstances. We're not talking about abnormal circumstances. Normal circumstances, you're not gonna make more tears, you're not gonna make more saliva, and you're also not gonna make more cholesterol than you need. So where is this high cholesterol coming from? Okay, so um, it's coming from other mammals because a potato doesn't need to make cholesterol. A carrot doesn't need to make cholesterol. Only mammals make cholesterol for hormone production. So uh, what are the raw materials? A lot of times I say, you know, the ceiling tile is a raw material. The floor tile is a raw, raw material. The tables, the chairs, the cabinets, you put them all together, you have an exam room. But individually, they're raw materials. So cholesterol is a necessary hormone, okay? And cholesterol is a hormone. All right, so that's the egg. And so we talked about protein, we talked about fat, we talked about um, cholesterol. Now the eggs of the plant world are the beans, the grains, and the seeds, okay? These are eggs of the plant world. So what do we know about these eggs? We know that all living organisms have protein. All living organisms have protein. Not some, not a few, all living organisms. So I tell my patients, if I take a pinto bean and I put it in the ground, I cover it up with dirt, we get some rain, we get some sun, is that pinto bean gonna grow? Yes. If it's alive, it has protein, okay? What about this grain that's gonna turn, turn into oats and barley and rye? If it grows, it's a living organism, so therefore it has protein. What about this seed that's gonna turn into an uh, a apples, uh, apple tree or a potato or a pumpkin? If it grows, it's a living organism and it has protein. So really, all of these animals that you're eating actually eat plants. Even the fish, well, fish are carnivores, but the littlest fish, like the sardine, eats the seaweed and the aquatic plants, and then the bigger fish eats that fish, and then the bigger and the bigger all the way up to the whale. But the original source of protein is coming from that little tiny sardine eating the seaweed and the aquatic plants. So all proteins actually come from plants, okay? So really when you're eating the protein over here, 
you're eating secondhand protein. It's not even the original source of the protein. It's secondhand. The original protein is here. The cow eats the grass, the chicken eats the grains and the corn, and we already know um, what the fish is eating too. Okay. The nice thing about these eggs, the plant eggs, is that when they sprout into the ground, when, they, when their roots grow into the ground, they pick up minerals, minerals, okay? Minerals are salts, okay? And they're in the soil. Minerals come from the soil. So what are minerals? Calcium, potassium, chloride, zinc, copper, iron, magnesium, manganese, sodium, okay? So these are all your minerals. Um, so when, when the roots go down and they're sucking up the rainwater, they're also sucking up the minerals as well. So every apple has calcium. Every banana has, you know, sodium chloride. There's a, the, each plant has a different amount. So the kale may have more calcium than the apple, but they both have it because they came out of the ground. Nice thing, you don't get the minerals over here. The minerals are gonna be secondhand over here. They're gonna be the original source of the minerals over here. So some people say, oh, I should eat more red meat to get my iron. Well, really you're getting the iron from the blood in the red meat, the heme iron. You're not getting the original source of the iron. Okay, the other thing I like about the plant eggs is that they also, these animals over here all have bones. These plants have fiber, okay? Fiber is what gives the plant structure and support. Um, structure so that it gives the shape of the leaves, it, gives, it keeps it firm so the plant can make it up to the ultraviolet light of the sun. So that is what uh, the fiber is for, for support of the, uh, the plant. Now, what else do we know about fiber? When it comes to your intestine, we know that fiber is good for digestion, okay? What we also know about fiber is that when, if you've heard anything about the gut bacteria, but the gut bacteria, that's E-R-A, they, um, they eat fiber. They do not eat uh, animal protein. Because if you think back, 50,000 years ago, that's what the gut bacteria evolved to eat, what we were eating, which was plant foods mostly. Um, so when they eat the fiber, they actually, in return, they give us butyrate. Butyrate is a mucus that lines, that the gut bacteria will, it's a mucus that will line the colon. It protects the colon. And this was discovered at Stanford University here in California by Justin and Erica Sonnenberg. They're professors at Stanford University and they were the ones who discovered um, about the gut microbiome. They have a book called The Good Gut if you wanna learn more about it but that's where we learned that the gut bacteria is making this mucus called butyrate that protects the colon, okay? Now, if you're not eating fiber, you are not making butyrate, right? So if you have an all meat diet where you're eating these products and you're not eating any of these, you're not making this, um, this mucus. So has your nose ever been dry? When your nose is dry, it's very ir irritated, correct? So just imagine your colon being dry like that, okay? And when you eat animal proteins that do not have the fiber, it causes the constipation that's like friction rub of that hard stool going through the colon. So as that hard stool is going through the colon, if this mucus lining is not there, then the lining of the colon is also being damaged. Now, another thing, the gut bacteria, they will not eat the meat and eggs that you're sending down the colon. They would rather eat the mucus because the mucus has a carbohydrate type of, it's a carbohydrate mucus, and therefore they would rather eat the mucus than eat the meat coming through there. So, and that's over time, 
week after week, month after month, year after year, decade after decade, the loss of that mucus lining is how you develop colon cancer. Yes, I know there's a predisposition and there's a lot of other factors involved, but 99% of the time, this is how the damage to the colon is happening. So what else do we get from these plants? All right, we also get vitamins. So going back over here, you're getting secondhand proteins, you're getting no minerals, you're getting no fiber, and you get no vitamins. Let's talk about those vitamins, okay. If it's a nice, bright, yellow, orange, or purple plant, okay? Nice, bright, yellow, orange, or purple, you get vitamin A. Vitamin A is necessary for your hair, your skin, your nails, vision, really, and it also contributes to mucus as well. The mucus in your nose, the mucus in your lungs to catch all the little dust particles. Uh, the mucus in your saliva that helps your, when you swallow, to, your food will go down. So not only are the gut bacteria making mucus, vitamin A contributes to mucus production that's necessary for good health with the mucus membranes. Okay, so think about in the uh, grocery store, the produce section, think about the nice yellow bell peppers, the red bell peppers, the red strawberries, the purple eggplant, the blueberries, the, the oranges. Think of all those bright colors, vitamin A, okay? Vitamin B is going, and I'm gonna put it in black, but vitamin B is anything green. Okay, so we're talking about your kale, your spinach, your cilantro, your um, broccoli, your um, parsley, your asparagus, your string beans, your, anything green is going to give you vitamin B. And what is vitamin B? There are nine B vitamins, but just as a group, it's necessary for cell function. Okay, it's necessary for your metabolism. It's necessary for red blood production, red blood cell production, and it's also necessary for your nervous system, okay? Now, when I talk about cell function, I had a 10-year-old ki kid that had a very high cholesterol, and when I do my lecture or my video on cholesterol, I'll probably bring up this 10-year-old kid. But what I said to him, he said he only likes to eat chicken nuggets and french fries. He doesn't like fruits and vegetables. And I asked him, I said, do you know anything about cars? And he said, yes. I said, do you know cars need gas? He said, yes. I said, do you know cars need oil? He said, yes. I said, do you know cars need to change their tires? He said, yes. I said, suppose I only put gas in the car. I never changed the oil and I never changed the tires. Is that gonna be a good running car? He said, no. I said, so if I'm only eating chicken nuggets and french fries and I never eat fruit and I never eat vegetables, am I gonna be healthy? He agreed, he said no. So when I talk about cell function, there are certain things that the cells need, kind of like with the car, the power steering fluid, the, um, the radiator fluid, all the different fluids that go into keeping that car functioning uh, correctly is what the green vegetables do. So you definitely need to get those greens back into your diet somewhere between one to three times a day. Next vitamin is vitamin C. This is basically your, your immune system, okay? This is gonna fight off the viruses, okay? The viruses, the bacterias, the fungi. This is to help your wounds heal, okay? Wound healing. Okay, you have to have vitamin C for that. Um, I won't get into the fancy words like free radicals and you know oxidative stress, but vitamin C is necessary to um, neutralize free radicals and oxidative stress. And free radicals and oxidative stress come from these things along with the functioning of the cell, just normal cell metabolism. Vitamin E is going to come from your nuts, and your seeds. So we're talking your almonds, your peanuts, your walnuts, your cashews, your pecans, all your nuts, your sunflower seeds, your pumpkin seeds, vitamin E. Vitamin E is also good for skin, hair, and nails. You get a lot of, you hear about a lot of vitamin E 
in your skincare pro uh, products, especially for skin, but it also works with vitamin C for your immune system. And uh, so some people have referred to vitamin C as the gun and vitamin E is the ammunition that keeps reloading the gun. So try to get these nuts and seeds back into your diet. Whether you're putting nuts on your oatmeal or you're putting sunflower seeds on your salad, get them back into your diet in order to get by a lot of vitamin E, okay? So at the end of the day, really, there's nothing over here that you really need that is essential for good health. Everything you need is over here. 90% of the animals on the planet eat plants. This, this is where they get their protein. This is where you get your protein, but you also can get minerals and vitamins and lots of fiber for a good, healthy gut. Thank you so much for listening. Like and subscribe.